and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Shrub, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. <laughs> and once again, we are just, it is our extreme pleasure to have with us today, Dr. Adrian Lowe. Dr. Adrian Thank Lowe you. is a pain expert, and I'm going to let you talk as to what your qualifications are, <laughs> what, what makes you that. And uh, uh, Brad? Yeah, this you, is a real treat. For, yeah, this for is us. a treat. And you're going to, I mean, this is like, going to one of the world's leading ex experts. Right. Yeah. <laughs> He's very modest. Yeah. Uh, but you'll yeah. find out if you, li yeah, once just you listen. start listening, you're you'll gonna, find out. You'll be on the edge of your seat. Yeah. So, Dr. Loke, if you could maybe just give a little bit on your background. Yeah. I, like I said, I'm a physical therapist, trained as a physical therapist, and got very interested in the world of pain and um, decided to study it. And then I was very fortunate to be surrounded by some of the smartest pain people on the planet, and they were very kind to me. And um just started studying, doing PhD work, and now doing an enormous amount of. We got about ooh, 23 studies right now. We're ongoing. Oh, fantastic! Um, wow. Big research team, and um, just trying wow. to get the world a better that is place. Awesome. So you got your PhD, yeah, in, and from South Africa, he's, it, right? And yeah. he's written all these books. We got 14 <laughs> right. or 14 books that he right. authored. Yeah, on and, pain. What, and yeah. what you're going to do is want to check these books out because if you have a specific problem. It probably is on one, in one of these books. So if you're you know having trouble with back pain, or if you're pelvic pain, or fibromyalgia, uh, check out the book links below, and we'll get into those specifically. If you're a therapist, you may want to check out this book, Integrating Manual Therapy and Pain Neuroscience. Uh, or there are also classes they put on, but it's going to be an evidenceinmotion.com. Sure. If you check that out. So right. sorry to bother to interrupt you. So no worries. carry on. Yeah. <laughs> So I guess, again, <laughs> what we're talking here, we're going to kind of talk about an example of some of the education that you give. Well, yeah. Why don't you talk about why the education is important? Yeah, we have just found out, you know, we several years ago, we interviewed people with pain. You know, what do you want from us? And, and the clear message is they want more information. The current, even though the people get internet and all those information currently isn't, it's not clear. It doesn't explain things really well. So we, I think it's even scarier. It is actually that. scary. Yeah, there was, there's recently studies that show 90% of the information on the internet about back pain isn't bad. It is disastrously bad. Oh, wow. <laughs> because it drives fear and all those things. And so we went to study pain. What is pain? How pain really works? And we found out people are better for it when they learn about pain, but from a neuroscience perspective. And what I mean is, if they understand the underlying biology. Now, the problem is, I cannot just sit with you like a textbook and say, this is how pain works. It's, it, it's, it doesn't make sense. Um, so we've taken this and put them in stories. We learn through stories. Um, everybody listening right now probably cannot remember what they were taught about history in fifth grade. We could lie, right? Say Lincoln. We can say Hitler. We can say anything of those. But we remember stories like the tortoise and the hare, right? Stories through the history of mankind. We've transferred knowledge with stories. Sure. And so we took this information, put them in stories, and, you know, it works. It makes people's lives better. T to be honest, one of the coolest things we're working on, we built a middle school pain neuroscience program that's now in nine middle school, nine states. No kidding. In the United no. States. So we're teaching kids about pain. And we're tracking them now for school and they experience less pain. They take less me uh, medicine when they hurt. All the things we want them to do. Which I imagine increase, is, decreases stress too. Absolutely. They yeah. have less fear, all those things. So we're sure. tracking them. And um, bottom line is if people know more about their pain and, and know how it works, their lives are better for it. And for us as therapists, it means they'll move. And movement is the biggest painkiller on the planet. Bar none. Absolutely. We the old were, motion is lotion. Motion is lotion. <laughs> motion, yeah. And you had mentioned in the other video some of the other things that can help decrease yes. pain too. Uh, yeah. In, in there's, to there's a bunch of stuff we have now looked at. I mean, if you look at things like sleep hygiene, um, sleep calms the nervous system. Now. There's different types of nutrition, um, uh, mindfulness, relaxation, um, goal setting, um, you know, different forms of exercise. Right, I may true. call it manual <laughs> therapy. Some people call it yoga, Pilates, um, etc. Sure. Movement, all those different movement styles. There's just so many different things um, that can calm the nervous system non-pharmacologically. Because that's a safer alternative for what we're doing right now. So uh, you, you, oh, go ahead, Brad. you'll see people that are on pain medications yeah. with a primary goal of reducing that? Is that yes. something you deal with on a regular Absolutely. basis? Absolutely. Um, and as we always say, you cannot take the pain medicine away. If I was a patient listening right now and say, don't take my medicine, I don't know what else to do. Our, we should think about it as a scale. If we build this site so powerful and my physician can take the medicine down, they don't freak out. 
And what we have now built, especially like in the in the VA, what I'm showing you right now, this 22 things we're doing is part of, in many VAs right now, is part of their anti-opioid initiative. If you build this side up, the brain turns on its own chemistry. Your brain right now has the most powerful medicine known on the planet between your ears. Um, when you... Um, hurt yourself, our brain has this incredible capacity to shut that down. We're sitting here right now, a farmer in nowhere, Minnesota today is putting up a fence. Auger pulls his arm and cuts his arm off in the middle of the field. The brain turns open the faucet, the, the tap, and just produces these fancy chemicals, endorphins, and and serotonin, where the guy feels nothing. Puts a tourniquet on him. He drives 20 miles to the emergency room. He probably stops for a coffee. We've heard these <laughs> stories, right? And then he shows or up the in the emergency in the room. I yeah, know, and yeah. then, we, then we ask him, what's your pain rating? I'm good. Oh, wait, how cool is that? When we hear our soldiers coming back and they have been shot, they're not aware of it. Our brain has incredible chemistry. When you're in pain, the brain dries that up to make you more sensitive. So we almost have to ask today, how do we take a dry brain, less chemical, and make it wet again? All that happy chemicals. And that's that stuff you guys do and I do, all that 22 things. Let's turn the brain on so we can take the medicine over time away and, and take So you're little. saying the brain physically can yes. produce yes. pain medicine. Medicine. You guys which, runners? Yes. We oh, talked yeah. about running and yes. dogs. We yeah. talked about it in a yeah. break, right? Yeah. A six mile run produces ten milligrams of morphine in the human brain. No wonder I'm you, so high. After exactly. That. Yeah. Yeah. You're a druggie, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm a druggie. Yeah. <laughs> so think about it. If you if you break your arm today and you go to the emergency room, they're going to give you two or three milligrams of morphine to set your arm. You get two to three times more than that by just going on a run. That's why this this is that runner's highs, and this, this is so much our brain produces to dampen the system, but it dries up when we're in pain because the brain's worried about us. So we have to enhance that again. So would you say the, of the 22 things, the first thing and the cornerstone of it is education? Is four. We've tested Four. it. Okay. We did, and trust me, we didn't sit one night with my buddies going with a couple of beers going, yep, yep, no, yep, yep, no. This is statistical modeling. There are four things you got to get right. Okay. You got to know why you hurt. The most dangerous brain we have is one that doesn't know what's going on because we all make up our own reality. And I mean, no disrespect here today, but all of us have been, all of us have found something on our body and I'm like, ooh, what's that bump? And two minutes exactly. later, you're thinking worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. So we, the brain must know what's going it's taking on. Taking those leaps. Yes, number yeah. one, check. Number two, you got to move. Motion is lotion. As you guys always preach, right? Motion is lotion. When we pump blood and oxygen through the human body, the nervous system calms down. And I know our, our, our patients right now and are, are watching this go, I know he's going to go there. We're going to run marathons, climb on Kilimanjaro. <laughs> no, no, no. A nice brisk walk. And very simply, so you got to get your heart rate up a little bit, pump some blood through your body. How cool is that? Buy a leash, take your dog for a walk. How cool is that? And then number th three is sleep. It is one of the biggest cornerstones we have. The minute somebody can get meaningful sleep, but isn't that simple as to say, go sleep. We got to change your biology. We got to get your system to dampen down. We got to get healthy sleep habits. And then number four, you got to have a reason to get out of bed. That's goals. There's got to be a reason to get you out of bed. And um, unfortunately, our system right now does not incentivize people to go back to work or to go back to activity. And we got to find that thing. And that's where we talk to our patients about deep beliefs and thoughts and goals. And if those four things are right, we've tested it, um, people have meaningful shift in their life. It's funny. I just read the book, Why We Sleep. Yes, right? yes, yes. And absolutely. I was telling Brad. Matthew Walker. That's, yeah, well, I, I, exactly. And it's a fantastic oh, book. It's mind blowing. And, uh, but it scares the heck out of you if you don't get enough sleep. I mean, I've changed my life now, yeah. making sure I'm going to get enough sleep. Yeah. I mean, we go to bed earlier. We. Wow. Uh, I would tell you, if you can get a person with chronic pain to sleep, you're halfway there. But it isn't that simple. It's gotta, not the simple, system has right. to dampen a little bit, but mm. mind blowingly. It's amazing. So uh, we, we thought we'd start the education process yeah, maybe with a story. Side. Yeah. Uh, and w w use a lion because you're from South, South Africa. Africa. That's right. We might use a barking dog <laughs> <laughs> or well. Cujo. How about, you probably don't know the movie Cujo. No. No, uh, I don't. No. He made that I up. I don't get he made that up, didn't he? A Stephen King movie. Oh, Cujo is this okay. huge <laughs> dog that starts attacking a family. And and it's it's kind of like the yeah. one example of a bad dog. Sure. So. I think he made it up. Yeah, we'll, go, <laughs> we'll go with the lion. Look it <laughs> up. Okay, we're going to use lion. Yeah. 
All yeah, right. so so one of the ways we often, you know, as I said, we tell stories to patients and it, it resonates with them. And so what we find with people in chronic pain, for example, they have problems, they fatigue. I have so many patients come and say, you know, I don't know what's going on. Since I develop pain, I'm so tired. Two o'clock in the afternoon, I'm wiped out. Or they say things like, you know, I cannot sleep at night. Either they cannot fall asleep or they're so exhausted, even though they sleep. And so we understand the underlying biology. There is stress chemicals running through our body. But sitting with you and just saying, let me tell you about how stress works is a little too academic. So we tell a story. And, I, and you guys are going to be my, okay, you guys are going to be my fifth graders. Okay. There's a TV show. Are you smarter than yep. a fifth grader? So and don't let me down. Don't let yeah. me down. <laughs> we're going to be perfect. <laughs> All right. If a lion jumped in this room right now, right, a big roaring African lion, what would you do? I'm gonna try run. to yeah. I'm gonna try to maybe I don't know where I'm gonna I'm gonna run or fly, fight or flight. But, you yeah, know, and most people are familiar with fight and flight, right? So we would run and and so you probably shove me in front of the lion. Yeah, yeah. This is <laughs> classic. That's right. We don't have to run fast. We just have to run faster <laughs> than you. Alaska. Right, that's right. me. Yeah. So mm -hmm. so we will sit with patients. If a lion jumps in, what would you do? And that's how I'd scream. I'd run or whatever. Fair enough. But then we run through scenarios. If a lion jumps in the room, um, are you gonna take a nap? I've never had a patient say, yes. They say, no, I'll be awake. Exactly. If a lion jumps in the room, are you going to mobilize all your energy or are you going to store some for the winter? No, I'm going to mobilize. They're smart, right? If a lion jumps in the room, which muscles do we need? The big ones or the small ones? It's the big, the big ones. ones. So I can punch the lion, shove Adrian in front of the lion, right? So they, they understand this. If a lion jumps in the room, are you worried about the food in your stomach? No, we shunt blood away from it. Everybody understands the system. The local zookeeper at Winona, Minnesota, I don't know if you have a zoo here, comes and takes a lion out of the room and you sit back in your seat and you go, Whew, that's a third lion attack in Winona this week. This better stop, right? We have this fight and flight. The system rams comms, rams comms. What does this have to do with somebody in pain? Pain is a stressor. Pain is a normal thing. All of us experience pain, but living in pain is not normal. I think we need to understand if you wake up in the morning and from the moment you wake up, you experience pain. By the way, that, that assumes you slept. And that lion is in your life, not for a day, not for a week, not for a month, not for a year, but for 20 years. Your system shunts, but never comes back. That's why when you wake up in the morning, guess what? You burn for your fuel by 2 o'clock and you're wiped out. And, and again, it seems simple, but patients go, wow, that makes sense. Now, and that's why you might have an irritable stomach for exactly, 20 years. Exactly, irritable stomach. it's not digesting like exactly. it should. Yeah, so the bowel and bladder is a little bit suspect. Um, we don't sleep um, at night because the lion could be in the room. All these things change. So they understand, you know, I, I, that's why I run out of fuel. When you lay in that room at night in bed, you can't go to sleep because where's the lion? So you don't fall asleep. By the way, since you're in sleep, you don't go to the deeper restorative phases exactly. we need. Which so you never right. really rest. Mm -hmm. And so these things, I know, uh, I'm sure people are looking at this, this is silly. I get, there's a, but it makes sense. I, I want to know how to get rid of the lion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's ways of getting rid of the lion, right? right? But this, the point is simply, we, then the question comes, and this is actually coming back to you, Brad, is then we ask somebody, you know, what would you do if a beautiful, small, little baby lion cub walk in this room? And the classic answer is, oh, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So we need to take this lion, and let's identify the lion. What is the lion? We have different explanations for our pain. Uh, we have no, we, treatments aren't working, I'm not sleeping, I'm worried about my job, my kids, my family. You make this monster list, and we just start attacking each one of these. Okay, let's talk about sleep. Now we go to the sleep program, and we work through a sleep hygiene. Good, check. Let's talk about this. And we slowly start making this lion smaller and smaller and smaller. So when we do wake up in that line, you go, Aww. Oh, now, this is what we're doing here. It's not everything, nothing, but we can slowly shift it. Or as we often say, and I mean, no disrespect, but we got to turn the Titanic around. It's a big turn. We're not sure. going to turn it over. It's not like a quick little mm. boat, but we're going to turn this turn. And the minute we start turning with better movement, better sleep, better nutrition, all these things, the boat can turn. It takes a little time, but it can do it. Well, it's funny. I just, I used this example last night. I was <laughs> talking to a family member. I won't mention who it is, but she has been <laughs> under a fair amount of stress yeah. and the stress has been calming down and she thought she had irritable wall syndrome. Mm. And I, saw, I said, how's your stomach doing? And she's like, well, it's been doing better. And I go, you know, I think it may be stress related. And I think I gave the, the example of the lion, how your, yeah. your digestive system slows down when the lion's in the room. And, and she goes, that just, 
because she kept thinking it was something serious, yeah. something mm-hmm. really bad. And she goes, that just is so calming to me knowing that, that that alone is, can be so helpful. And I said, yeah. that is true. And that's yeah. what they have found. Yeah, and, and, and we need to understand, obviously, we, we do due diligence by screening, right? Right. Um, I have a practice like you guys. Patients walk off the street. We go through a very thorough medical screening before we jump to these. So I don't want to think, we, think we, all we do is just sit and tell Excellent stories. point because so yeah, we, someone could come in and it yes, could be something serious. Absolutely. Yeah. So we do screen carefully. But once we've covered the bases, we will go this route. And again, if things don't change, we examine again. So we do due diligence um, but but again, the more people understand, the better off they are. Like, oh, that makes sense. And we can see the changes. And if you have the example of the person coming in that has seen yeah. 20 clinicians, they probably have been screened already for serious things. Fair and they, enough. Yeah, Fair and enough. they have not found anything yeah. that could be a problem. So it, you know, the screening has almost already, already been done so to, to, to a large extent. So yeah. I, you know, I think a great starting point, again, if you have a specific pain issue, check out the books below. Um, I mean, these books are great. They're, they're terrific. I mean, you, you've touched on just a small part of, of oh, yeah. uh, you know, with the story. There's a lot of other examples in there, a lot of other stories. And uh, I think this is a great way to start, you know, getting to a life without pain, you know, or at least a managed pain. So, yeah, yeah I agree. I, I'm, I want to hear more <laughs> about getting rid of this lion, but, <laughs> but the books, you know, uh, you know, I know we talked about diet. Uh, a year ago, and I'm like, uh, diet, blah, blah, I don't want to deal with it. I'll just quit eating less. And then I start reading some books on my own. And once I start reading and seeing that it, my mind can decipher things better, and it, it, you know. Well, that the sleep book that we mentioned too, I think it's just fascinating. Right, Absolutely. right. I mean, and it's such a, so much better to educate yourself, become better as opposed to going to the doctor and getting, coming out with some pain meds and not really feeling any better than you were before and not understanding it. Right. So Um, so I I just think education is so powerful. Now we had a video the night before on another one from Dr. Lowell and uh, we'll have one in the future too on fibromyalgia. So, you know, stay tuned to the channel. We'll check us out. All right. Thank you. Thank you.